be careful on that knife. When's the last time you opened one of them? Two years ago. <gasps> oh my god, I can't watch when they hold a knife like that. I'd like our chefs to cook pan-fried scallops, served with a cauliflower velouté, croutons, and a curry butter sauce. Some classic skills here on display. How long are you going to give them, Marcus? 20 minutes. Oh, they're going to have to get a wiggle on. Show me how you do it. They've got to get this cauliflower velouté on pretty quick. It's not a soup, it's not a sauce. It sort of sits in between. So I'm starting with the shallots because I want to sweat them down. Just nice and fine. A little bit of oil in the pan. Put a little pinch of curry into there. And I like the curry into this because I think it just really does bring out the flavour of the cauliflower very, very well. Just let that sweat under a lid. You really want to get the cauliflower cut down as fine as you possibly can. They've got to think timing, so slicing it down the way Marcus is doing is all going to cook quickly at the same time, get a lot of flavour through into that sauce. I love cauliflower. There's a creamy earthiness to it that I really like. Now I'm going to go on to my croutons. They can do whatever they like. I'm going to marinate mine. Olive oil, oregano, a little bit of curry powder. Now that we've sweated the cauliflower down, touch the chicken stock. And I'm just going to put some milk into there. So, croutons are marinating, the lute gently cooking away. I'm now going to prep my scallops. got no flesh left on the flat side. Just gently work around the skirt. Just nick the muscle and the scallop just falls out. We don't want to see them be rough with the scallops. You know, it's just going to damage this beautiful ingredient. They can wash them, but they must dry them straight away. What you don't want to do is have them too wet when it comes to cooking them because they'll just poach in the pan. Now I'm going to blend my salute a little splash of cream, a couple of knobs of butter. We want it lovely, smooth, a velvety texture, thick, rich, creamy sauce to go with your scallops. My velouté is ready, croutons are ready. Now, for the last minute, I'm just going to cook these scallops. They can leave them whole if they want. Cutting them in half and cooking them this way, 30 seconds in the pan and they'll be done. Nicely cooking away. I love the foaming butter in the pan, I really do. We really don't want them to overcook those scallops. I've just put a few knobs of butter, a touch of curry in there, and this is my curry sauce. So we're good to go. Oh, that's lovely, the scallop against the crouton. Oh, I do like that. And there you have it. Cauliflower velouté, scallops, crouton, and a curry butter. Beautiful. I'd like to think our chefs have been practicing opening scallops, making croutons, no problem. And if they can bring some of that together, I think you're wearing to a winner. 20 minutes, off you go. I'm going to get the velouté on first. I'm going to sweat down some cauliflower in butter, add some stock, and I'm making butter sauce, and I'll do leave the scallops till last. Brilliant. Sounds good. Why are you a chef, John? I went to university to do 3D modelling and animation. Decided that wasn't for me, and ended up working in a little local pub. How long ago was that? Nine years. I love the camaraderie ship and the rush of service, making customers happy. I've completely fallen in love with it. Be careful on that knife. When's the last time you opened one of them? Two years ago. <gasps> oh my god, I can't watch when they hold a knife like that. quite frightening to watch. He's actually very careful once he gets them open, which is good to see. Any passions out outside of food, John? 
I've got a second degree black belt. What? In what? Uh, Bujinkan Ninjutsu. Bujinkan Ninjutsu is a traditional Japanese martial art. Coming up to halfway, give us a rundown of, of where you are and what's left. Jock's just got in for the velouté. I'm going to reduce that down and then add cream. Give these scallops a little wash, let the pat dry. As long as it's done very quickly, like he's done, it's OK to wash them. He's going to make sure they're very dry, though. Mmm, buttery croutons. But he's got to make sure that the heat's not too hot so they don't burn. Tell me about the butter sauce. How, how are you making that? I'm just going to take some butter down with curry powder in it. Right, John, you've got a couple of minutes left. Are you yeah. happy with everything? Yeah. John, you've got one minute, please. Perfect. Play Thank up. You. Some of those croutons look dark. All done? Yes. And breathe. Thank you. All right, John. Hi, Chef. The scallops taste delicious. Beautifully caramelised, a little bit of butter in there. I saw you basting them. That was great. I made a velouté. That's more of a puree, but it's lovely and smooth. The curry butter is great. Beautifully presented. Croutons? Come on. The pan was just yeah. too hot. It's a shame about those, because otherwise it would have been a great complete dish. But for your velouté, you can taste the cauliflower. I like that you cooked everything gently and let the flavours develop. Well done. Um, we're all, I think, looking forward to seeing what you could do in the next round. Thank you very much. It sounds simple, but we've had bad mash before, especially under pressure. It's got to be smooth, it's got to be seasoned. Yeah. You want to get some of that butter through it. I'm going to start adding the milk and the butter into it so it's nice and rich. And we're ready to plate. Oh, nice. Sausage is on. A nice big dollop potato puree. First job, I'm going to start the beer and onion gravy. And I'm going to use a stout for my sauce. Nice, bitter stout. Get that slowly reducing. I'm going to get my onions on. So I'm looking for our chefs to cut them nice and neatly. Marcus, why did you choose bangers and mesh? It's not only a home-cooked dish, it's a pub dish, it's a restaurant dish. There are lovely little key skills in here Monica and I will be looking for. Get those into there. I'd hope they walk in here and, and don't think, you know, oh, bangers and mash, done in 10 minutes. Use the time carefully to cook them beautifully to make a wonderful sauce to go with it and the best mashed potato they've ever made. And that's quite a lot of onions, but when it's an onion gravy, I want onions in my sauce. So, next, I'm going to get my sausages on. Sausages, for me, are all about just great colour all the way over. I don't want one side coloured more than the other. I don't see one side burnt. It's all small little points of detail. I'm just going to sit them in a nice pot of paper and they're just nicely, just gently tick over in there. Onions are caramelising and I'm going to flame them with some brandy. Flambe bangers yes. and mash. You know you're on Pro MasterChef when that happens. I'm going to put a little splash of balsamic vinegar. A little bit of stock. So the stout is nicely reducing. So I'm now going to counteract the bitterness of it by just incorporating a little bit of honey. If our chefs don't sweeten the reduced stout or the reduced ale, it's going to be very bitter, yeah? Yeah. So just adding the stout into there, just a bit at a time. Keep reducing that down. Lots and lots of care and love going into that gravy. I want them to make a mash. I've got some milk in here, just warming through. I've given them a baked potato. 
push it through, don't scrape it through, because it'll just get claggy. It sounds simple, but we've had bad mash before, especially under pressure. It's got to be smooth, it's got to be seasoned, yeah. you want to get some of that butter through it. We've all had this. You must have had this dish when you were a kid, right? Yeah, my dad was a potato merchant, as you know, so I think we've probably had potatoes pretty much every day of our lives. Place the puree into the pan. And we'll start adding the milk and the butter into it so it's nice and rich. And we're ready to plate. Oh, nice. Sausage is on. A nice big dollop potato puree. Oh, mate. And there you have it. Bangers, mash, beer and onion gravy. That's making bangers and mash about as posh as you can, that is. I think our chefs are going to be in for a little bit of a surprise with this one. Monica, you are going to keep a watch for life in the back room. All right. We'll see you back for the tasting. First in is private chef Dan, whose childhood in Birmingham inspired his love of food. I'm half Cantonese, quarter English, quarter Irish, so it's a big mix there. I grew up around Chinese food on the weekends, lasagnas, cottage pies in the week. I'd say my food style is a mix of modern European and Asian cuisine, focusing on big flavours and what you can get out of each ingredient. First time in the MasterChef kitchen, nerves will hit me, no doubt. I'm used to walking into new environments, but this is a different ball game. And I'm hoping I just don't crumble. This skills test was set by Marcus. Good to meet you, Dan. I'd like you to make for us bangers and mash, serve with a beer and onion gravy. 20 minutes, Dan, off you go. Right, Dan, you got a plan? Um, I'm kind of putting it together as I go along, so I'm going to saute off some garlic, some onions for my gravy. I'm going to get the sausages in, brown them off, get a nice colour, finish them off in the oven. And that'll be for my mash. OK. It's never easy for any chef to walk into a different kitchen. Got to think on his feet what he's making. So what type of chef are you, Dan? I've worked in restaurants my, most of my life, and then I moved to private chefing about a couple of years ago. OK. It's very different, isn't it? Yeah, it's very different. You can focus more on your own style when uh, you're a private chef, uh, but obviously you miss the interaction with other chefs in the kitchen. Have you cooked this type of dish for the people that you work for? Um, no one really asks for bangers and mash, if I'm completely honest with you. I know, it's criminal. I would. If you had a private chef, I bet you'd ask for bangers and mash. Most certainly. <laughs> At least twice a month. <laughs> Oh, sausages are bursting. That's a shame. I'm just going to finish them off in the oven. You've got ten minutes left. So, tell me about the sauce. How are you going to make that? I've just sweated down some onions and some garlic. I've added a couple of bay leaves for some flavour. I'm going to add the beer. I, honestly, I'm doing this as I go along. It would have been good to at least see him reduce that beer down before he put the stock in. I don't think he's going to have the depth of flavour. Are you happy with everything you've done so far? To an extent, it's the most simple dish and it just caught me completely off guard. What do you just put into that sauce? Some honey? Some honey, yeah. Why? I, I want some sweetness through it. It's quite bitter at the moment. I've just got the ale and everything. Oh, it's pasta onions up. Oh, I like the onions in the gravy. We've got just two minutes. Two minutes, All right. You're going to have to get it on the plate. Now, you got a plan of how you're going to dress this? Um, no, I haven't, uh, but I, I assume there's only so far you can go with bangers and mash. Yeah, it's, it's not very thick. It's not like a gravy. And it's also, he's passed all the body out with the onions. Oh, dear. All done? Yes. All right, Dan, 
Very well, thank you, Chef. Sounded easier than it was, huh? Dan, you could have caramelised the sausages a little bit better, which is unfortunate because it's sort of burst one of the sausages open. Pompiore, it's nice, it's smooth. Onion gravy, leave the onions in. But you do have a nice flavour of beer in there, and by counteracting the bitterness of the ale with the honey, um, you've got a lovely balance. Not bad at all. From what I could see, there is a chef here. You showed great knife skills. You're very tidy and methodical in what you're doing here. Don't overthink it. Interestingly, Dan, you haven't actually got off to a bad start. And actually, it looks like you know what you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, chefs. I was expecting, like, classical French, stuff like that, and you get hit with sausage and mash. And because it's so simple, your mind starts running. You want to elevate it a bit more, and I just didn't in the end. Beautifully rolled out. You see his hand through it. Looks nice. What have you put in your filling? So in the filling, I have put sun-dried tomatoes, the burrata, some basil, and just salt and pepper. You don't seem at all troubled by this whatsoever. I was quite excited about this girl's test. I would like our chefs to make us agnolotti filled with burrata and sun-dried tomatoes. Burrata is like extra creamy, wet mozzarella. I mean, it's just delicious. Served with pea and mint pesto. I can't remember what shape agnolotti is. It's obviously a filled pasta, but right now I can't remember it. It's like a, a pillow. You know, you pinch the sides and then you cut in between. How long are you going to give them? We're giving our chefs 20 minutes. Monica, I want to see you do it. Go on. All right. So the first thing I need to do is make my agnolotti. The key to pasta rolling is to get the pasta rolled out in a rolling pin first and get the shape you want and then start to putting it through the machine. Agnolotti, of course, famously named after two brilliant female pasta makers. Is it really? Anya and... Lottie. Lottie. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Greg. You got me. That's going to have to be really... Th if, if that's going to double over, that's got to be rolled thin. The filling is burrata and sun-dried tomato. Sun-dried tomatoes can be quite strong. Mm. Burrata is very delicate in flavour. And if you put too much of sun-dried tomato, you're going to, to lose it completely. I'm using it literally as, as a seasoning for the burrata. So I've chopped it up quite fine. Pasta skills, always a challenge. Always put the fear into our chefs. You want to see them all exactly the same size. I think that's really important. So it's going to be a real test of our chef's skill here. So just in pinching it, you're sealing the little parcels. I've got a feeling we, we may end up more ravioli than agnolotti. So my little agnolotti parcels are made. So now quick pea and mint pesto. I'm just going to lightly toast some pine nuts and some fresh peas into the blender. A few nuts. To garlic. Traditionally, everyone thinks of pesto as basil, don't they? Yeah, but uh, I think nowadays, you know, people are happy yeah. to experiment with whatever they have. Parmesan. Pulsing it, because I want some texture and I don't want this to go completely smooth. My mint and pea pesto is done, and I'm now going to drop my agnolotti into the water. These will only take a couple of minutes of that to cook, and we're ready to serve. A moment of truth for our chefs here, because if any of that filling ends up in the water, they'll know they've got a ripped pasta. There's nothing worse when pasta parcels burst into the water and they serve it, because you know it's not right. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, they really do look like pillows. Love the colour on that pesto. Love it. You can't rush it. You need to take your time, do it properly. It's just about showing off what they can do. That's all we want. And there we have it, agnolotti filled with burrata and sun-dried tomato with a pea and mint pesto. That's gorgeous. It looks great, full of skill, full of complexity, absolutely delicious. Marcus, you are going to watch them very closely on the monitors in the next room, and we'll see you back here for the tasting.
get the chefs in, let's see what they're made of. First up is 31-year-old Jamie, head chef at an events catering company. I've been a chef for 10 years. I started in a small cafe, um, learning how to cook while I was at school. And I eventually went on to Michelin restaurants and then worked my way to events. We normally served celebrity parties, BAFTAs and film premieres. I am very inventive. I like to shock and awe and have a little bit of drama in the dish. I've been practicing, I've been training, so I think I'm going to pull out all the stops. Jamie, I would like you to make for us a burrata and sun-dried tomato agnolotti served with a pea and mint pesto. OK. Jamie, do you know what an agnolotti is? I know what an agnolotti is. I haven't made one, but I'll give it a good go. Great. Jamie, you have 20 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. Right, here we go. First one up. So my plan, I'm going to prep the sun-dried tomatoes, some mozzarella. Then I'm going to roll out the pasta and make a sauce. Sounds like a plan, Dan. Cut the pasta in half. Quarter. That's what Monica did. Yeah, he only needs a quarter. Jamie, do you have a favourite cuisine? I do. My family are half Greek, so I really like Greek food. And I used to cook with my grandma from the age of about nine years old. I love Greek food. Are we going to see any Greek food from you if you go through? We will. There's a few dishes I've got up my sleeve that are in homage to my grandma. Oh, bless you, mate. Beautifully rolled out. You see his hand through it. Looks nice. What have you put in your filling? So in the filling, I have put sun-dried tomatoes, the burrata, some basil, and just salt and pepper. You don't seem at all troubled by this whatsoever. I was quite excited about this girl's test. He's very comfortable with pasta. He could have squared it off and made it a little bit neater, but let's see what the end product looks like. Jamie, I don't want to trouble you, but you've only got four minutes left. You all right? I'm good, yeah. Pasta's in the water cooking. Pasta's in the water. Onto the pesto. Onto the pesto now. And how are you making your pesto? So I've got the fresh peas. I'm going to toast off the pine nuts and some mint, olive oil, and a bit of salt and pepper. Nice. I'm going to start placing up. Yeah, his pesto could be better. I think he could have done a bit better job with that. Thirty seconds, Jamie. Last touches, whatever they may be. All done. All done. Pressure's a lot. Hey, Jamie. You're probably one of the first chefs that I've ever heard that looked forward to the skills test. <laughs> Jamie, not quite an agnolotti. The agnolotti, you make a line off the mix, pinch the edges. So you were really close, but I like that you try to, to figure it out. Pasta is also nice and thin. The filling is very strong in sun-dried tomato. The sun-dried tomato has completely overpowered that delicate burrata in there. But it's a good start. I, I like that you stay calm and you manage to deliver something. Thank you. I love the way that you cut the pasta into quarters and you only took the pasta that you needed. Exactly the same as what Monica did. I would love the pesto to be a little bit wetter, but I do like it. It's really nice. That's a very good looking dish and tastes delicious. Jamie, that's a pretty good start. You've done pretty well. Well done. We'll see you soon. Do you know how to make an Italian meringue? Yep, I do. So I'm going to make a sugar syrup, bring it to, I believe, 121. Keep going, yeah. Slowly start whipping egg whites and then uh, slowly add the sugar. Oh, very good. She, she knows what she's doing. Marcus, two chefs waiting to do your skills test. Yep. Obviously, it's sweet. What are you going to get them to do? I'd like our chef to make us a strawberry dessert and I want them to serve it with Italian meringue and a strawberry ripple cream. 
this is really going to showcase what they're about. Can they do pastry? Yep. How long are you going to give them? 20 minutes. Go on, chef. The ripple cream, you need to get that on first. We all know what a ripple ice cream looks like. That's pretty much the same effect we're looking for. What I want them to do is to make a very strong strawberry jam, which they're going to have to put through the whipped cream. So I don't want them just to put a puree in because it's too watery. I want to see the ripple. And we're just going to bring that up to a fast boil and then let that reduce. Ripple cream, they've got to make sure that it's going to hold. Yeah. Uh, we can see the lovely colours of the strawberry through that. It's thickening now, and I'm just going to put that into a bowl of ice. But we do need it to be nice and cold before it goes into the double cream. Mmm, smells beautiful. Italian meringue. Oh, yeah. What is it, Greg? An Italian meringue, you put the egg whites into a mixing bowl, and then you pour hot sugar on the top, and it cooks it. That's right, right? Temperature of the sugar? 121. Very close. <laughs> 120. Oh! I'll give you that one. They cannot afford to take their eye off that sugar for the meringue, can they? No. Coming up to 114. Almost there. So, meringue's just starting to come up. Cook sugar. And just gently just pour that in. Do you have to drip feed the sugar in? Can't you pour it all in at once? If you pour it all in at once, you've got the possibility that you just cook the egg white straight away. So it'll just scramble. Ah. This has to show the colour of a chef who's been in the pastry section and understand, you know, how hot that syrup is. Just whisk it away until it cools down, basically. So just leave the machine on there. Now I'm going to move on to the cream for the ripple. I'm going to use one third clotted cream and two thirds double. And I'm putting the clotted cream in because I want that body for it to hold the jam. Some vanilla pods. Just a little bit of sugar. And then just gently bring it up so it starts to thicken. Right, the ripple, Greg. You can now start to see the consistency of the strawberry jam. It's thickened up considerably and it's a lovely texture. I've no idea how you make the ripples. I'm really looking forward to this. Once the jam has been added into the cream, you can't start to whisk it. The whole point of it is you're making a ripple. You're not making a strawberry cream. So lightly fold. OK, brilliant. Fantastic recipe, that is. I've just cut up some of the strawberries and I'm going to be doing two different types. One I'm going to cook and I'm going to use honey, Szechuan pepper, balsamic vinegar, and some fresh mint. They can do this however they like. It's entirely up to them. Marcus, I think this is where they can have a lot yeah. of fun if they can just relax into this. I mean, you're giving them the opportunity to create something here. Yeah. You've got a lot of different ingredients on there. You've got some alcohol, vinegars, flavors, even a couple of spices as well. Just drop the strawberries in. So I want them to be soft, but infused with the flavors but I don't want them to turn to a puree. So that's them done. My second type of strawberries are a marinade in vanilla, elderflower, gin. Mm. Cool, it's getting summery, isn't it? So I'm just going to take some mint and basil. This is just going to infuse into the flavour. That's my, my two strawberries. One's cooked, one's raw. Now we're going to dress our plate. How do you know when your Italian meringue is right? When it won't come out of the bowl when you turn it upside down. <laughs> are you making little kisses? Little domes that are going to be torched. Low torch. Cream? Oh, yeah. Strawberries and cream. Is there a finer marriage of ingredients? I do like it. strawberries and cream. And there you have it, my strawberry dessert with a strawberry ripple cream and Italian meringue. Fantastic work. Almost a magic garden of strawberry delights, that is. Look at it. Wonderful. Working in Italian meringue, the understanding of the textures of a ripple sounds easy, but it's a great test for our chefs to showcase what they can do in the pastry. 
Monica, you're going to watch the chefs attempt the challenge from the other room, and we'll see you back here for a very strawberry flavoured nibble, I should imagine. <laughs> Hello, Elena. Hi. Welcome to Master Chef. Everybody starts with the skills test. This one was set by none other than Marcus Waring. I would like you to make us a strawberry dessert served with Italian meringue mm -hmm. and a strawberry ripple cream. 20 minutes, off you go. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know how to make an Italian meringue? Yep, I do. So I'm going to make a sugar syrup, bring it to, I believe, 121. Keep going, yeah. Slowly start whipping egg whites and then uh, slowly add the sugar. Oh, very good. She, she knows what she's doing. Happy with dessert? Sort of, not my strongest. Pastry stresses me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I find that pastry, you have your timings have to be on point. Pressure. Yeah. Why are you a chef, chef? My granddad always used to cook. He owned a bed and breakfast. We'd make a cake or I'd be offering to make pasta and stuff like that. Have you got brothers and sisters? Did they learn to cook with your granddad? Yeah, I have a twin sister and two brothers. My sister owns a cake company. Your twin sister's a pastry chef? Yeah. We both go hand in hand. I'm more savoury. She's trained to be a professional pastry chef. How much would you want your sister here right now? A lot. <laughs> Chef, you're halfway. Italian meringue is looking good. That's good. She's left it to continue whipping so it can cool down. How's the meringue? Good. Good. You've got six and a half minutes. What have you got in there? Just added some ice and sugar, and I'm going to add some orange liqueur. Marcus had two different flavours of strawberries, but it's good to see she's focusing on one. She's given it a lot of care. I'm, I'm fine with that. Right, you have four minutes left. Yeah. Have you thought about the ripple in your cream? How are you going to do that? I'm just going to fold some strawberry puree just for it. If she folds the strawberry coolie through it, that could actually just let out the whole cream. It might just blend in and make it a pink cream. <laughs> Meringue's done. Right, do you need to start getting this dessert on the plate? Mm. She's got the ripple, but it's very soft. This ripple's not going to hold by the looks of it. You've got a few last seconds, so anything else has got to go on has got to go on right now. Yeah. Are you done? Yep, finished. You're out of time. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Some nice little points there. I love your approach to the Italian meringue. You got the temperature, you got the whole process just right. The ripple cream, strawberry puree you needed to turn into a jam. And then to get the best ripple effect, you've got that thick jam running through a thick whipped cream. And the clotted cream is there just to hold it just a little bit more. But it's not a bad attempt. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm. Your meringue is really, really light, well made. I love the little bit of basil on the strawberry. The strawberry's got that real extreme sweetness of the balsamic. But also, I can pick up the little bit of warmth of the orange liqueur. Yeah, there's a subtlety about that. Italian meringue's lovely. It's light. You've got the syrup in at the right time, so it hasn't dropped. Really good job, considering that you haven't done pastry for a while. So it's just a shame of that cream. Mm -hmm. I thought if you'd got that cream right, this would have been a brilliant start. Not bad. Eleanor, thank you very much. <laughs>